Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, today we are back up at the store here in Peachtree, and we're working on Joe's F550 once again. If you remember back in the summer, we had done an injector replacement and glow plug replacement on this truck, and ever since then, it has been running great. But now it is winter time here in North Carolina, and the cold temperatures have made it hard to start. So I got to thinking there may be a problem with the glow plug circuit. Because we just put new glow plugs in it, I didn't think it was logical that it would be the glow plugs themselves is the problem. So yesterday I came up here to diagnose it and uh, it was just so cold, cameras weren't gonna work very well. It was only like 18 degrees, I was bundled up, but I figured out what was wrong with it and I figured I'd come back today and show you guys the steps that I took to diagnose it and how we're gonna fix it because the weather is much better today. It's like 40 degrees, so it's still chilly, but it's not brutal cold. Now on the 7.3 Power Strokes, there are basically two different types of glow plug systems. The first is where the glow plugs are controlled by an actual glow plug controller. And if you guys remember back about two years ago, maybe three, I made a video on that on my excursion and I'll put a link to that right here. If you guys wanted to see that video and how I diagnosed and replaced the glow plug controller. The other version is this a simple solenoid system. So there's basically a large relay that has to activate to activate the glow plugs. And that is what is on this style truck. But before we get into that, I know that some of you don't understand relays and we're gonna show you exactly how a relay works. All right guys, and get a better understanding of how a solenoid or a relay work. And keep in mind that a solenoid and a relay do the exact same job. But typically when someone's referring to a solenoid, it's just for a much larger current application. A relay is usually for lighter circuits, solenoids are for heavier circuits. But to make you better understand that, going back to school guys, we're going to art class and uh, you have to forgive me because I am definitely no artist. First thing though, let's understand the simplest of automotive style circuits. Let's start with a battery. The battery is what stores the electrical power. Now within the battery, you have a positive terminal and you will have a negative terminal. Now we're also gonna need a load. Now a load is anything in the system that uses electrical power. Now electricity needs to flow from the battery to the load and then back from the load to the battery. Now this load can be anything from a light bulb to an electric motor, it doesn't really matter. It's just something in your vehicle that uses power. Now in this representation of the circuit, we have a connection on the positive side, we have a connection on the ground side, so this device will be powered on no matter what. If this is a light bulb, it is gonna light up. If it's an electric motor, it's gonna start to spin. Now if we want to control that circuit, and turn it on and off, we've got to find a way to break the supply. So you can break the power supply right here and you can install a switch. Now that switch can be installed either on the hot side or the negative side. In either case, it will break the circuit and stop the flow of electrons. Either way, the load device stops operating. Now let's say for instance that we needed to run a load that drew a lot of power and required a larger power supply, a larger wire or even up to a battery cable. And if you still needed to control an on off circuit on there, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to run a large gauge wire too far away from the load device. A perfect example of this would be your starter motor. Typically in most automotive and motorcycle applications, the starter is the highest load drawing device in the entire electrical system. That's why the battery is usually located relatively close to the starter and it will have a very large gauge wire going from the power supply to the starter. So it wouldn't make a lot of sense to run a large gauge starter wire all the way into the passenger compartment, run it through a switch there and then back out to the starter for multiple reasons. One, it would be more expensive, that larger cable costs a lot more money, there's a lot more copper involved. Also, the switch to activate the circuit would have to be much heavier due to your switch. So we use what's called relays, and basically relays are just switches that are able to be controlled remotely. 
Now relays and solenoids will come in all kinds of sizes depending on the circuit that they're designed to operate. In this particular case, because the glow plugs are a heat source and there's eight of them, there's quite a bit of draw that is involved with powering them up. So you wouldn't want to run this through a teeny tiny little relay such as this. And that's why we use the much larger relay like this. Now notice there are four electrical connection points on this relay. Two of them are large and two of them are small. The two large ones are actually to carry the current of the load. The two small ones are to activate the relay. Now the relay is actually an electromagnetic switch. So sending current to the primary side will activate a plunger that will either make or break contact depending on the way that it's designed. And electrically, the circuit looks something like this. So if this is a representation of the housing of the relay, you would have your large terminals that would carry the power of the load, right? You'd have a lead coming out, a lead going out this way. And inside, you would have your plunger. So when this plunger is up, you see the T-shape, it connects the two terminals. When it is down, there's no continuity between these two terminals. So when up and in the closed position, it would then carry the load across, through it, and then out to the load device. Now the primary side or the activation side of the relay would have a wire coming in from a power supply and it would basically wind all the way around this and then come back out. When the electricity comes in, it flows through this winding of coil and creates an electromagnetic force, which will either push or pull the plunger depending on the way it's designed. So the primary side of the relay or solenoid has got to have a power supply and a ground to complete its own circuit because at that point it becomes the load device just like explained in the first segment of this. So now that we have our battery, our load, and our relay, we can run a much smaller gauge wire into the car to the ignition switch and then back out and it just activate the relay. And then when the relay closes, it will carry that load. So now your power flow would be from the positive side over to the relay, then out from the relay to the load device. Load device is still connected to ground. The relay is also connected to ground. And then the primary lead will come up, go through the key switch like so. So when you turn the key, you're making this connection, which completes this circuit, activating the relay, which then carries the power from the battery through the relay and back to the load device. All this can be mounted under the hood and just the smaller gauge wires run into the passenger compartment in order to be activated by the key switch. And just like in our original circuit, that switch to activate the primary circuit can once again, either be on the voltage side or on the ground side. And to make things even more complicated, sometimes there are other relays that will cause this relay to activate, but we're not gonna go into all that. So basically your relay, your solenoid is just a remote switch to control a higher load device without having to run the large gauge, high load wires a longer distance than necessary. All right, so now that we have a basic understanding of how relays and solenoids work, we're gonna show you the practical application on how I actually diagnose this. Now today, Diego was my helper. He came up with me to hang out. So hopefully he doesn't bark too much of the video. He tends to be mouthy sometimes. All right guys, so I have my multimeter set up here and I've got the ground wire run to the negative battery terminal so that I can use my positive wire to make the test. So let's do this. Okay, I have the meter set to DC volts and in order to verify that everything is working good, I take my positive probe, stick it here, Look at my reading, 13.61. So we know that everything is functional. All right, and here in the four power strokes, this right here is your glow plug relay. And the other relay that looks identical to it is actually for the intake air heater, which goes in right here. Now, both of these relays are exactly the same. And uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and replace both of them because this one was acting up on me yesterday. I got it to work but it was picky on when it wanted to work. So we're just gonna replace it with new ones because these are probably OEM and have been on this truck for 23, 24 years. 
All right, so the wiring on these in both units, this lead here, this lead here, well, these are connected to the battery at all times and should always have battery voltage present regardless of whether the key is turned on or not. So we'll check that right here. All right, there we go, 13.61. We'll move over to the glow plug relay and same thing. So we know that that isn't the problem. Now, when this relay is connected, it should transfer power to this circuit, which, so I check here, there is no power going to that side in either case. That is exactly as it should be for this application. So with the key off, that's exactly what you should see. But also we've got the primary circuit. And on this vehicle, the primary circuit should have no power with the key off as it does not. Switch over to this one. Again, it does not. Now, this primary circuit, this terminal here and this terminal here will both energize at the same time when the key is turned on. That wire is tied together. It's the same circuit, the ignition circuit. It also powers the lift pump on the frame and other accessories that it needs to actually make the engine start. So it's not hooked to your accessory. You don't need that to run when you're just listening to your radio. So when the key is on, there should be power at those two terminals, which I did verify yesterday there was. So that isn't a problem. Now on the intake air heater circuit, you can see the wire coming out and it goes directly to the intake air heater circuit. And then down there is actually a ground wire that grounds it. On the glow plug circuit, you have a series of wires. They'll split off, go to this valve cover, also go back over to this valve cover to power those. So in theory, with the key on, we have power here, which I did verify. Now, once the key is turned on, that power stays constant to these two terminals the entire time that the key is turned on, the entire time that the engine is running. The ground is then controlled by another source like the ECU to tell it how long to stay on for. And in some cases, that can be very tricky to test because you won't have a continuity to the ground unless the device controlling that circuit is connected to ground. We went over that a little bit in the diagram a moment ago. But no matter what, when the key is on and the engine is cold, the relay should click and you should hear an audible click on a relay this size and then power should transfer from this terminal to this terminal. And in my case, that was not happening. So at this point, there are two options. Either the relay is bad or the control circuit isn't telling it to control. In order to verify that glow plug was actually the issue, I actually took the jumper cables, hooked them to the battery, and I ran the positive jumper cable from the battery to this terminal directly, which goes straight to the glow plugs, regardless of anything else. The key didn't even have to be turned on. That energized the glow plugs. At that point, I cycled the key to the on position and fired the truck up and it fired up instantly as soon as the glow plugs had been energized. So now I know for a fact that that was the reason the truck wasn't starting but there was still the reason of why the glow plug relay wasn't activating. So to eliminate the ECM or the control circuit from this, I decided to manually activate the solenoid to see if it would work. Now I've already got the battery cables hooked up to the battery. So I went ahead and just connected to the relay, isolated from the rest of the truck, to see if it would click. So with the jumper cables connected to the battery, I connected the positive to here, the negative to here, and you should hear an audible click in the relay, and you should have seen power transfer from this pole to this pole. And in our case, that did not happen. So the relay was not activating. So we went to Napa, got a new relay. Now there could still be the possibility of the control circuit not activating that relay. But with the test that we did, we proved that the relay wouldn't work even without the control circuit. So no matter what, the relay is bad. So we're gonna replace the relay and see if that fixes our problem. That should be pretty easy. You've got the four electrical connections at the top. There's only two bolts that hold the relay down. All of that should be relatively easy to get to. But we're gonna go ahead and do both of them at the same time and just be done with it. So the first step here is I'm gonna go through and break loose all eight of my electrical connections. Then I'm gonna come down and break loose all four of my physical mounting points. At that point, nothing is gonna twist or turn when you're trying to break the last thing loose. 
and then uh, it should be relatively easy to just take them apart, switch them over real quick. Just so you guys know, when you're working with some of these older Fords, you've got to have both metric and standard tools. So the large nuts on the top here and here are half inch. The smaller ones are three eighths, but the mounting bolts are actually 10 millimeter. The negative battery terminal on this side is a 12 millimeter. The negative battery terminal on this side is a half inch. And speaking of battery terminals, the very first thing we're gonna do is disconnect those negative battery terminals because remember, two of the leads going to those relays are hot all the time and we don't wanna accidentally arc them against something. So safety first. see it only took about five minutes but I don't know if you could tell in the time lapse I only replaced the glow plug relay I did not replace the other one even though I've got it all disconnected and ready to be replaced because I realized there is a difference between the two so if you look at the old relay it's exactly the same as the new one replaced but the key is these mounting tabs there's one here and one down here by my thumb and they are kind of like at the base with like a triangle at the top Turns out the other relay, they are 180 degrees out. So the other tab would be here and where my thumb is. So physically mounting it is a little bit different. And I didn't realize that because I just ordered two of the same relay thinking they were the same. So real quick, I'm going to call Napa. If they've got the other one in stock, I'll just drive up there and swap them out real quick. If not, I may just go ahead and replace it. It'll still be held down. Um, I'd just rather be held down by two points rather than one just for long-term vibration issues. All right, so I just got off the phone with the Napa and they do not have the one in stock. She ordered it, it should be here in the morning. So I don't think I'm gonna put this one in. I'll just put tighten those connections back down. I said that relay wasn't really the problem. I just, I figured it was gonna go out soon anyways. Um, but if I install this, then I can't return it. So I think we're just gonna keep this one brand new in the box, go through it back in my pickup truck so I can swap it out tomorrow when it gets here. But we should still be able to put all this back together and test and verify that we have fixed our problem. All right, guys, so I got everything buttoned back up, batteries reconnected. So now what I'm gonna do is go turn on the key and we will see if we have power coming across that relay to the glow plug wires. And hopefully that's all good. All right, the key is on. I could actually hear something click up here. So let's check and see if we got power here. I'm gonna touch that, check our meter. And yes, we have power. So we should be able to fire right keep up. Keep in mind, it is actually about 38 degrees. So let's see if this worked out well. Well, for 38 degrees, I think that started pretty well. And apparently, Diego wants to go for a ride. Well, guys, I'm glad that that is done. And uh, well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Until the next time I see you, keep those engines running. But for now, I got to get this guy out of here, get him back in the other truck. Come on, baby. Let's go get in the other truck. You're such a goof. You're a goof. Come on, let's go get in the truck. trying to walk himself. This way, buddy. Gotta go around the fence. Come on. <laughs>